Eyewitness News. Eyewitness News. Eyewitness News with Tim Fleischer and Victoria Corderi. Bill Evans with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tim Fleischer. On the other side of the bench, where Saul Walkler thought he would never stand, but New York's former chief judge, charged with harassing his former lover and now accepting a plea bargain, must face the judge. Tim Mitten has the latest live outside the courthouse in Trenton. Tim. It is all over now except for the sentencing. For months, Saul Walkler's lawyers had insisted that his mental illness would be a viable defense that could be used at a trial. But after Wachler's guilty plea accepted in just the last half hour, there will be no trial. The former judge showed no expression and said nothing when he arrived accompanied by lawyers and relatives. One defense source told Eyewitness News that Wachler resigned himself to making his plea after weeks of negotiations with prosecutors ended yesterday afternoon. The case against Wachler is largely based on a series of increasingly threatening letters and cards received over a period of months by his former lover, Joyce Silverman. One card sent to Silverman's teenage daughter included a condom and the warning, you must be careful. The enclosed should be used by your boyfriend before you do it. Underneath was a PS that read, I have a picture of your mother doing it, which I will send you soon. In court, Wachler pleaded guilty to a charge of sending threatening communications, still a felony, but less serious than the extortion charge he faced until today. Maximum prison time would normally be five years, but Wachler's deal calls for just 12 to 18 months. Asked by a judge less than an hour ago to make a formal public statement of admission, Wachler said, quoting, at no time did I intend to actually kidnap or harm Miss Silverman's daughter, nor did I want to take or accept any money. Walker had been charged with trying to extort $20,000. That was part of the charge that was dropped today. Later, he said, I am deeply ashamed and sorry for what I have done to Miss Silverman, my wife and children, and the people who make up the court system of New York. Then his voice cracking, the former top judge said, I know that I can never make up for these acts. I express my profound sorrow and regret. Were you satisfied with what Saul Wachler said as far as his admission and his contriteness, such as it was? Um, I, I think what he said is sufficient as far as it goes. I'll be honest with you and say that we're going to have a lot to say at the sentencing. Um, and in measuring his contriteness, I, I measure it against the background of what I have to say is an unprecedented fusillade uh, hurled against the victim in the case. Today uh, is a sad day, but, but God willing, a new beginning uh, for the judge. Uh, tough day ahead and some tough days ahead, but, but he is um, he's a real man and a real person, if you will, and, and prepared to deal with uh, those events. Whatever has happened up to this point, whatever will happen in the days ahead to Saul Walkler, there is no argument with this simple fact. It was demeaning and a public embarrassment for the former top judge of New York to stand in front of a federal judge today as he did for an hour to be read the same rights that are read to all the street criminals, including an explanation of how many people are on a jury. That's what happened to Saul Walkler. He is about to come out of this courthouse. He will be sentenced in several weeks. We're live in Trenton at the federal courthouse. Tim Minton, Channel 7. Eyewitness News. Amy Fisher is hoping Joey Buttafuoco winds up charged with statutory rape. She told her story to a grand jury, and now Mary Jo Buttafuoco may get her turn. Buttafuoco has asked to testify before the I Nassau County the grand jury on her husband's behalf. She has long maintained that she believes her husband did not have an affair with Fisher. She says she has information that will, will be beneficial to Joey Buttafuoco's defense. And jail time is over for the Reverend Al Sharpton. He's been released from the Brooklyn House of Detention. He'll serve the rest of his 45-day sentence on a work release program. He was in jail on charges related to a protest he led following the murder of a black man by a white gang in Howard Beach. Well, the legal worries are just now beginning for the suspects in the World Trade Center bombing. Yesterday, FBI agents seized a computer printer from the office of one of the suspects. The attorney for Nidal Ayad says that it was seized because Ayad used the printer at work for personal letters. Investigators are trying to establish a link between the printer and a letter claiming responsibility for last month's bombing of the World Trade Center. Another of our top stories this noon, the computer giant IBM is sending out pink slips as it continues fighting red ink. The company served notice to 1,400 workers at plants in Kingston and Poughkeepsie yesterday. 
Another 1,200 people are expected to lose their jobs by the end of this week at a plant in East Fishkill. It is in sharp contrast, though, to the deal handed to new IBM chief executive Louis Gerstner. His package includes $2 million a year in salary, an incentive of a million and a half a year tied to IBM's performance, and options of 500,000 shares of IBM stock. The Suffolk County Legislature has voted to keep its 8.5% sales tax rather than raise property taxes. The county legislator vote, legislature voted to extend what was supposed to be a temporary increase in the county's portion of the sales tax. Now, without the extension, county residents would have faced a stiff property tax increase. The state legislature still must approve of the county's decision. Long Island Railroad commuters will surely approve of a plan to offer them cash refunds. Those refunds apply to the estimated 40,000 riders delayed March 10th on the Hempstead, Huntington, Port Jefferson, Oyster Bay, and Ronkonkoma lines. That delay was due to a freight derailment in Queens. A mother's dream for a better life for her children is over today. Rose Marie Dunbar was murdered yesterday afternoon on a Bronx street corner, caught in the crossfire between two suspected drug dealers. Ms. Dunbar was shot as she was walking to the post office near her home. She had moved from Jamaica in search of a better future for her four children. Neighbors say she will be deeply missed. Very beautiful person, you know, she's like um, a mother figure to younger people growing up here, you know. She would all your, always help you with problems, you know, always say good things to you, you know. Police are looking for a late model Acura legend used by some of the alleged gunmen. The search is on for a man involved in another crime where a family fortunately came away unharmed. It was a carjacking that suddenly went wrong in Jamaica, Queens. A father was filling up his car with gasoline when the terror suddenly began. Kay Kasuda is live in Queens with the latest on that, Kay. Tim, the suspect in last night's carjacking is under arrest today. Police here are studying the evidence, which includes a car and a weapon. Employees and customers at this service station in Jamaica, Queens, say they're shook up over last night's carjacking of one customer's car. Police say Materia Sutton and her five-year-old son were victims of an armed gunman. They say the driver of their car, husband Reggie Burnett, had stepped away for a few seconds when the incident happened. Some employees and police differ as to where exactly Reggie Burnett parked his car here at the station, but they all agree that when he went back to the booth, a man with a gun forced Materia Sutton and her five-year-old son out of the car, telling her to leave her purse in it. Security guard John Lassand, who watches over both the station and a lot next door from a trailer, says he saw the woman screaming but didn't see the suspect. He showed us how the suspect could have hidden behind a car wash at the station. So I said, they get over here and they can hide. Or they can sit back here and hide, you know what I mean? It, it's hard for people to see them. But you can see what they're doing. You see that? You see the crack cloud? Lasanne says there have been other similar incidents. The suspect, 23-year-old Long Island City resident Peter Gilliard, then drove the car a mile away where he crashed it into a parked vehicle. This weapon, a 22 caliber semi-automatic pistol, was found on him. Officer Patrick Carney and his partner arrested him at the scene after a brief struggle. Uh, and, uh, the victims were brought to the scene and they ID'd this uh, this perpetrator as the, the man who had deed robbed them earlier. And police say Peter Gilliard faces charges that include robbery, grand larceny auto, criminal use of a firearm, and criminal possession of a weapon. Reporting live from the 102 precinct in Richmond Hill, Kay Kusuda, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. A family nearly torn apart by crime in New York, but in the Midwest, it is the legal system tearing apart a family. Up next on Eyewitness News, the child at the center of a custody fight, given up when she was a young baby, but now her biological parents want her back. Plus, he is the man who may hold the key to ending the standoff between David Koresh and federal agents in Waco, Texas. Uh, for that to happen, I... I was sentenced to prison. I was not sentenced to be raped. These women say they were raped by prison guards. I thought that if I had a hysterectomy, that they could keep me away from the prison guards. They made me have sex with them two weeks after my surgery. This guard faces 21 charges of sexual misconduct. You have never touched in an inappropriate way an inmate. All accusations made against me are lies. Prison sex scandals on the next Oprah. Today at 4, right here on Channel 7. Four years is too long not to talk to a brother. He stopped being my brother four years ago. He is not, you're my brother. You're my brother, all right? What, what if he were to apologize, huh? 
Ray, Ray is going to apologize. He hasn't apologized to anyone in his whole life. Well, well what, if, what if he was to say to you straight up? He's got nothing to say to me. I got nothing to say to him. Three-way calling from New York Telephone is great for putting together lots of practical things. But what it puts together best is people. Lou, don't hang up. Please. Raymond, what do you want? Look, I'm not apologizing. I just think it's time we should talk. You want to talk now? Now you want to talk? It's time now oh, to talk. Oh, oh, Louie, give him a chance. L listen to him, Lou. Order three-way calling from New York Telephone now, and we'll connect you free. Free. You'll save $16. See, I knew he was going to make it tough on me. All right, okay. Can't. Ray, Ray, Ray. I'm here listening, right? Nothing brings people together quite like three-way calling. Order now, and we'll connect you free. Do your bills arrive by the bag full? If you're a homeowner, call Statewide Capital at 1-800-DIAL-CASH and consolidate them into one low-cost home equity loan. Even if you've been turned down at the bank, you can lower your monthly payments. The interest may be tax deductible. Then pull just one bill out of the bag. Make just one low payment. For a better tomorrow, dial cash today. Call Statewide Capital now at 1-800-DIAL-CASH. The fight for Jessica, a bitter custody battle involving a little two-year-old girl in Michigan, has taken yet another odd turn. In this back-and-forth struggle, this time Jessica has been returned to her biological parents. But this may not be the end. Roberta and Jan de Boer had raised two-year-old Jessica as their own daughter, even though the couple had not adopted her. And now they are on the brink of losing the little girl following a lengthy and often bitter court battle with the child's biological parents. I've said all along, I would like to make an appeal to the divorce to please just let her come home. It's, it's past time to end it. A Michigan appeals court ruling yesterday tossed out an earlier ruling that allowed the divorce to seek custody of the girl in Michigan. That means Daniel and Kara Schmidt, the biological parents, can take her home to Iowa. But the DeBoers say they will challenge that decision. This is like a death. Our daughter's dying. You cannot subside the pain of having your heart torn out and knowing that your daughter may go away very soon. The Schmitz, though, were not married when the adoption papers were signed, the child's mother naming a different man as the father. When Daniel, the real father, learned of the child, the couple then sought to gain custody of the little girl. Appearing on Good Morning America, the Schmitz say they are now preparing for the return of their daughter. We did want to enter a motion for immediate visitation to ease the transition so she's more um, accustomed to us when she comes home. We believe she'll adapt to us and uh, with therapy and that will turn out to be very fine. The DeBoers have 21 days to appeal the ruling, but some legal experts don't believe Michigan's higher court will even hear the case. And the Schmitz, they now reveal they are expecting their second child. Well, another legal standoff may be nearing an end. A lawyer representing cult leader David Koresh is trying to negotiate an end to the month-long siege near Waco, Texas. An attorney hired by Koresh's mother entered the group's compound again this morning, the third time in two days. He says he has Koresh's trust, but the FBI does not want anyone to raise. I must say that raise. it has not elevated any. I, I cannot characterize it any more than guarded optimism, and that was what I did uh, yesterday. If necessary, the attorney will go back into the compound for more negotiations this afternoon. In Los Angeles, the police officer who was seen on videotape inflicting the most baton blows to Rodney King is expected to take the stand today. Officer Lawrence Powell will be testifying for the first time in the federal trial of four L.A. cops charged with violating King's civil rights. Much of the case hinges on whether King was struck in the head. That's a violation of police policy. And just ahead on Eyewitness News, we'll find out if this time's the charm for Susan Lucci of All My Children. The Emmy Award nominations for daytime dramas are out, and we'll tell you who's up for the big prizes. Plus, it's the perfect day, sunny and warm. Bill Evans will be along if we can get him out of the shade. Tell us what to expect. The race is on for mayor of New York, and Eyewitness News brings on the challengers. In a special report, meet the men who are fighting it out for the city's top job. Thursday at 11, meet Rudolph Giuliani. His friends say he's quick, thorough, a man with a plan for New York. 
His foes say he's a media monger and we'll all pay the price. Master decision maker or master of the publicity game. Watch the 93 vote. The mayoral elections. The challengers. An Eyewitness News special report Thursday at 11 right here on Channel 7. Take home America's number one selling video for under $20. Yippee! Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. A tale of monsters, magic, and royal fun for all. Sneak previews cost Little Nemo a family find. The Washington Post declares it impressively grand. Take home the magic of Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland for under $20 after mail-in rebate worth $5 with purchases of Tropicana Triplets Orange Juice. Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland, wherever videos are sold. Why come to Treasure Island for the best outdoor furniture? For one thing, we guarantee value. We simply will not be undersold. Compare our beautiful quality selection, the world's finest brand names, exquisite fabrics, patterns, textures, vibrant and subtle colors, infinite possibilities. And best of all, we guarantee your satisfaction for as long as you own the furniture. To turn your backyard into a vacation paradise, come to Treasure Island. It's a most unusual store. A truly tender experience comes along so very rarely. Fortunately, such tenderness awaits you in every bounty bar, where a sea of the most luxurious chocolate embraces coconut so moist and tender it could only come from paradise. Bounty, the taste of paradise. Try a little tenderness. During this commercial break, some people are going to put on weight while others are going to start taking it off. Call Nutrisystem. Call 1-800-321-THIN. Do it now and lose all the weight you want for a dollar a pound plus the cost of meals. You can change the way you look, the way you feel, the very way you think about food. Call Nutrisystem. Once you change the head, the body's easy. Well, the Academy Awards are over, and just when you thought you were safe from another award show, it's time for the Emmys. Today, the nominations for the Daytime Drama Awards were announced in the category for Best Drama, ABC's All My Children, As the World Turns, The Guiding Light, The Young and the Restless. They're all up for the Emmy. And for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama, Peter Bergman of The Young and the Restless, David Canary of All My Children, Mark Derwin of Guiding Light, A. Martinez of Santa Barbara, Robert S. Woods of One Life to Live, and Michael Zaslow of The Guiding Light. And in the Best Actress category, nominations went to Julia Barr of All My Children, Linda Dano of Another World, Ellen Dolan of As the World Turns, Maeve Kincaid of The Guiding Light, and perennial nominee Susan Lucci is up again for All My Children. So, you know, she's the highest paid actress in daytime soaps. What does she care if she wins an Emmy? Yeah, so right? well, it didn't hurt Al Pacino not having right. a Right, uh, no, Oscar it's just did. great publicity. No. That's what you remember from those <laughs> awards. Laughing all the way to the bank. That's yes. right, good for her. Yeah. At an award-winning day, I figured you'd be sitting back in a shady spot someplace. You know, I, I gotta hurry because my lawn chair is double parked outside the building here. <laughs> it's always double parked outside the building. Beautiful day today. Yeah. Gonna be gorgeous. Yeah. Will be the best day of the next four because after today, boy, we really bottom out. This is a look at Columbus Circle, where things are beautiful today. Lots of bright sunshine. You can see you really don't need the big jacket today. Things are going to warm up really nicely this afternoon, and it will be simply beautiful. Here's how things look outside right now. We have skies that are rather sunny. Blue, 62 degrees outside. Humidity, 36%. So it is bone dry outside. Hardly any moisture in the atmosphere. The barometer has been rising with a little bubble of high pressure that has been moving in. That's allowed the barometer to rise. We still have winds that are out of the northeast at 8. They may turn a little more easterly today and we'll get a little bit of sea breeze. So Long Island, coastal Connecticut, the Jersey Shore will be a little bit cooler than the city. Probably not getting out of the mid to the upper 50s today. We haven't had any rain in the last 24 hours. Well, look at these satellite pictures across the northeast. Clouds are advancing now. We have a big time storm system that is down toward the southwest and that storm is just continuing to move north for now and spreading clouds north. We'll see clouds coming in from the system later this evening around 4 or 5 o'clock just prior to sundown. But you can see we have a little bit of a bubble of high pressure right across the northeast. That's why we have the clear skies. But this storm is quite potent. It's packing quite a punch. Three or four inches of rain have been down south. Winds have gusted to 70, 80 miles per hour. It's produced hail the size of golf balls and softballs and baseballs and all beach balls, all kinds of sizes of hail inside the storm, which is very strong and very potent and will begin raining tonight after midnight. 
Across the country, here's the rest of the satellite pictures to show you. Here's the big storm spiraling through the central plains. It is very strong and probably will produce more rain that will be very heavy from Chicago to Detroit, across Ohio into western Pennsylvania. If you have to travel this afternoon or tonight, all of these areas are going to see a lot of delays at the airports. Then as it spreads eastward, it's producing snow over the upper peninsula of Michigan, and that snow is going to keep moving eastward into New England. Down south, very, very nasty weather where these yellow, these uh, red boxes, I should say, are thunderstorm watch areas for southern Georgia, the panhandle of Florida, and northern Florida as well. Precipitation here in southern sections of Minnesota and also in Wisconsin is snow and is falling rather lightly. That will keep moving eastward with the storm as well. So when we look at the forecast weather maps for this afternoon, it will be just a gorgeous afternoon. 65 will be the high. That's about 5 degrees, 6 degrees above normal for this time of the year. Just a beautiful afternoon. But here's the next storm system that is advancing. We expect to see an inch to an inch and a half of rain out of the system. That's really going to cause a lot of problems in northern New Jersey, Westchester, Rockland, Dutchess, Ulster, Ulster counties with the flooding that's coming with the snow melt. So we expect to see flooding tomorrow morning in the areas that normally do that when we get heavy rain. We expect to get an inch, an inch and a half out of this. The commute tomorrow morning will be terrible, and there'll be a lot of snow in New England out of this system. Could be a half a foot in the mountains. Sunny, beautiful this afternoon, high of 65. Tonight, cloudy, windy, rain by 3 a.m., low should be 40. And then tomorrow, well, just a terrible day tomorrow. Heavy rain, wet snow, probably some sleet north and west of the city. The five-day outlook. Some light drizzlies on Friday with maybe a little wet snow as well as on Saturday morning. Then the whole system pulls out Saturday and we'll see sunshine on Sunday. Be particularly careful tomorrow morning making the commute. It will be rather nasty. Not like today, which is just simply beautiful. Thanks, Bill. Okay, Bill. Up next on Eyewitness News, a look at the day's medical news. We'll find out why some women are terrified of breast exams, even though they might save their lives. Also ahead, it's a perfect dish for that special occasion, shanks, as prepared by Mr. Food. I was sentenced to prison. I was not sentenced to be raped. These women say they were raped by prison guards. I thought that if I had a hysterectomy, that they would keep me away from the prison guards. They made me have sex with them two weeks after my surgery. This guard faces 21 charges of sexual misconduct. You have never touched in an inappropriate way an inmate. All accusations made against me are lies. Prison sex scandals on the next Oprah. Today at 4, right here on Channel 7. Welcome back. If you've gone away from cold cuts, you'll be delighted to hear this. Welcome back. Boar's Head Ham actually has less cholesterol than skinless chicken breast. Boar's Head Turkey Breast has far less fat than baked salmon. Boar's Head Roast Beef has fewer calories than tuna in water. Welcome back, welcome back. If you said bye-bye to cold cuts, welcome, welcome back, back to Boar's Head. Whatever reasons you had for not getting cable TV, starting now, you just ran out of them. Because cable TV offers installation for just $9.95, plus Showtime, HBO, The Movie Channel, and Cinemax. Get big savings when you order cable and premium TV. Showtime has spectacular blockbuster movies, Basic Instinct, Hook, exclusive engagements. HBO has huge box office hits, Lethal Weapon 3, Batman Returns, big names and special events. Watch the movie channel for non-stop entertainment action. Bugsy and Cape Fear. Cinemax has sensational movies around the clock. Patriot Games, Stephen King's Sleepwalkers. Call now toll free and get even more. Get cable TV with 24 hour news, sports, kids shows, music videos. You'll have all the reasons for having the time of your life. Call 1 800 OK Cable and get installation for only $9.95 when you order cable and premium TV. Call 1 800 OK Cable now. Some good news for babies and for parents who suffer as their infants wail through their early vaccinations. The Food and Drug Administration has now approved a combination vaccine called Tetramune that will spare babies four of the shots they presently receive. The vaccine maker says it will be available in doctor's offices in about a month. Vaccines prevent disease and breast examinations could save the lives of women. But a new study finds that many high-risk women fail to get the exams or mammograms or even do their own self-examinations, often because their fear of dying of cancer. Only half got annual mammograms and only about a quarter examined their own breasts monthly. 
Federal officials want to examine hormones given to cows to make them produce more milk, but may be harmful to humans. An FDA panel will hear testimony today on whether cows treated with genetically engineered hormones are more likely to get infections. When they do, they are treated with antibiotics that can be passed along to people in milk and meat. Here are some of the stories we're working on for Eyewitness News at 5. If you're leasing a household appliance like a TV or a VCR with a deal that sounds just too good to be true, it may very well be. That scam could cost you some big money. We'll tell you about it. Also, exclusive information in a case against Joey Buttafuoco. A grand jury hearing testimony again today. We'll have a live report. And a history-making musical celebrates a golden anniversary. Blowing in off the plains, Oklahoma turns 50, and we'll take you to those celebrations. All this and much more at 5 on Eyewitness News. We do hope you join us. And finally, if you're planning a big weekend dinner, you should take a new look at an old favorite. Mr. Food shows us how to make lamb tasty, and it's so easy. We're always looking for something new and different to serve, but still easy, and still with the comfort taste of home. Well, here's a main course that fits all of these with a few more pluses, including using any brands you've got in the house. It's lamb shanks. They're meaty and they're inexpensive. And if they're marked American lamb, they're sure to be tender and mild besides. Now, we've simply sprinkled six of them with salt and pepper and baked them for an hour and a half or two hours. Now, we also combined in a skillet three quarters of a cup of broth with one each of sliced yellow, red, and green pepper a sliced bunch of scallions, a cup of white wine, and a crushed clove of garlic. Now we cook it a few minutes to, to tender the peppers and, and get rid of the alcohol in the wine and to marry the flavors together. Then we mix in two tablespoons of cornstarch mixed with two tablespoons of water to thicken it up. And then we pour it over the lamb shanks. Mmm, mmm. And so easy to serve because one on a plate is all that it takes. There's no carving, so you look like a pro. And if you'd like the recipe, just send a self-addressed stamped envelope marked Pepper Shanks to me, Mr. Food, right here at the station, and we'll get it back to you for having the old-time taste of pot roast with a modern look and a modern crunch of the peppers, plus the easy and the reasonable and the applause and the new excitement and the fun. And we didn't even mention all of the, oh, it's so good. Oh. <laughs> and that's the news for now. I'm Victoria Corderi. And I'm Tim Fleischer for Bill Evans and all of us here at Eyewitness News. Go out and make it a great day. And join us again tomorrow for Eyewitness, and also today for Eyewitnesses at 5, 6, and 11.